Hi, this is Wishup, and this is your reading for the Virgo full moon of March 1st, which is at 11 degrees of Virgo. So the thing I want to say about this astrologically is that I think we're still walking a path and Virgo sets up these gateposts at either side of the path. If you think of the traditional moon card, we have this path going underneath the moon in the tarot card. Um, I think you are charting a path between some new and unexpected and even weird or strange stuff that has been surfacing lately as you try to integrate it with your everyday life. And I think the reason you're trying to do that is to, in some sense, redeem something either an activity from your past or some experience that you would like to try again and do better. You're trying to improve upon something that's not totally unfamiliar to you, but you're bringing in these new influences and you're making a bridge between them that may be very unexpected, even to yourself. Um, one of the things I was telling myself is, it's like a person suddenly starts seeing an otherwise invisible unicorn and they're having a great relationship with the unicorn and getting really good solid messages and yet they still have to do their laundry and get their bills paid. Finding a way to bridge those things that seem hard to navigate between is what you're doing now. And you may have had trouble because of Mercury and Pisces explaining what you're trying to do or your vision of how you think things could be, that should get easier. Mercury is heading into Aries. Venus is also heading into Aries. Um, as soon as Mercury hits Aries, which I think is the sixth, let me look here, could be the seventh. It's the seventh. Uh, Mercury and Venus both hit um, Aries on the seventh or very late the sixth. Um, because of that, uh, as soon as Mercury hits it, it's going to start slowing down, preparing for retrograde later in the month. This isn't a time, I think, to worry about Mercury retrograde because I think it's mostly going to slow things down a little bit, which you might be ready for. Jupiter also goes retrograde on the 9th, and it's in Scorpio where it's been doing some intense business, like surfacing that weird stuff which is great. It's been digging up truths and bringing some strange things to light. And really, we could all use a chance to come to terms with those things. And that's what I think this uh, period of March going into mid-April is going to be. You can still start things. You can still launch things. But you're going to want to do it in a very step-by-step -step manner. Not to expect to come out with huge fireworks but just put together a rational plan and just follow it because you're still going to be incorporating newness and unusual things. And so I think we're, this is still a lot of gateway energy and I think it's taking you where you want to go. I mean, you might be the first person who works at a toll booth and also is a unicorn communicator. I mean, and that might be this strange combination that only you and all the world work out, but you find the way to work it out. So I think that's what this time is about, charting that path for yourself. Um, the next new moon is going to be in Libra. I'm sorry, the full moon at the end of the month is going to be in Libra. The next new moon, let me look this up here, um, is going to be in Pisces. So since we're going to have the new moon in Pisces on the 17th, we're still going to have some of this creative energy. And part of the way that Pisces resolves things that don't want to go together is it breaks everything down and it mixes them up into a sludge. And you're thinking, I don't even know what this is anymore. That's why I think it's good to be patient with the process. I know I'm speaking kind of even more vaguely than usual, but then again, 
you know, everything's still in Pisces right now. So that's just how it goes. But I think this is a path you're walking and you're creating something that's never existed before, some brand new flavor that nobody even knew they wanted. And it's hard to explain. It's been hard to explain. It's going to get easier to explain. And as you proceed step by step, you are going to find that you get buy-in. So, okay, let's move on to the cards. I chose the Hoi Polloi deck for the Super 70s fun. Okay, Ace of Wands. In reverse, death. <laughs> In the past. And what have we got over here? The Magician in the future. Okay, so I don't know. This kind of tells the story. Death is, as um, many of you know, the strongly transformative energy. Death is also um, Pisces, the house of endings. It can be that 12th house energy of things that are being broken down so that they can be changed, dissolved, so that they can be reborn. So, um, like the caterpillar basically gets liquefied <laughs> before you um, end up having a butterfly come out of the same cocoon. So this is this process. And chances are you have been experiencing these strange energies of transformation happening within you. So the Ace of Wands in the present says you don't need to take any hasty action. You know, the Ace of Wands is fire and initiative and go, go, go. And because it's in reverse, yes, there is a new start. Yes, there is something new that you're pursuing. Um, and it is tied to Aries, but there's time. There's time to get your ducks in a row. And the magician sort of indicates that too. There's time to get all the pieces together. So Mars is currently in Sagittarius, so there may be a sort of a little bit of a rush, rush feeling or a scattered feeling because of that. In general, I find Mars and Sagittarius kind of supportive of new ventures, like it gives energy to new ventures. The only hazard is just not to feel rushed, to feel like you have to do everything now. Um, you don't. Even though we're going to hit uh, Jupiter going retrograde in March and it will be retrograde through July, that doesn't mean that you're not going to make progress. We make progress all the time, even while planets are retrograde. So we're going to spend most of this year with planets in retrograde. And that's fine. <laughs> it's okay. So just keep working your way because you're doing something new. You know, here's the magician. You're doing something inventive. You're doing something creative. And it may have been something that you had to go through some strongly transformative energy. You really had to rethink the way you'd done things in the past. You had to redefine yourself. You had to sort of rebirth um, your notions of who you are. I mean, there's a lot that you've probably gone through <laughs> in order to get where you are now. So you don't have to rush forward as if there's some ultimate destination you have to get to in the next two weeks. You are doing it. You're, you're making progress. So just try to allow yourself to build these skills. I just keep having the sense that you're trying to make yourself into a bridge between two things, between these two sides of the 11, between the two towers of the moon. You're making yourself a bridge between things that haven't necessarily been bridged before. And it's experimental and it's challenging and it's new so um be patient you know there's a put a big sign up patience genius at work you're doing it um you're making it happen so uh, just try to proceed in rational practical ways while you let all this stuff which is very new and interesting um find a peaceful place in you because you don't want to be in a position where you're torn apart by these um, opposites or these forces that you're trying to bridge. You don't want to be in the middle of a tug of war between them. You want to be this strong force in the middle, bringing them together. So where you start to feel 
pulled and pushed, that's a time to slow things down and center yourself, if that makes sense. Um, so I did pull two um, oracle cards and I pulled to, to deal with these sort of opposite energies again. I got the Brownies uh, Oracle by Doug Thornsjoe. And this is an Angel Answers card by Doreen Virtue and Radley Valentine. So let's go with the brownies first because I think these are, these are funny and kind of sometimes absurd and even sort of perverse. So let's see what they have to say. Urgency. Yes, that's exactly what I thought. Um, that there might be this sense of urgency, urgency. You're running out of time. You have to get it done now, now, now. That may be natural to feel as spring comes, as we start heading in March toward um, the spring equinox, but try not to let it run away with you. There's a difference between um, enthusiasm and passion and running yourself ragged and making yourself miserable and doing things just for the sake of doing them. And this full moon in Virgo is really asking you, Maybe you don't have a master plan with all the milestones in it, but I think this full moon, and here we've got this nice full moon here, is saying, what parts of the process do you need? How many different things are calling your attention? Do they all um, need your attention at once? Are there some of them that can take a back seat? You know, if you've got all these competing... Um, competing agenda items, the Virgo full moon is shining a light on which ones you really need to do now and which ones maybe you want to pace. So try to keep in mind, it's okay to pace yourself. And if you're getting urgency from other people in your life or in your work or whatever related to these things you're working on, you can understand the pressures they're under, but that doesn't mean you have to go along with it. So let's go with this. Not the right time. See, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> We've got these two extremes. One is saying, do it now. You have to do it now. And the other extreme is saying, no, it's not the right time. You are navigating this. These are the two pillars. This is the 11 degrees of Virgo. You are going to figure out how to carve your way through this. And I know that you can do it because we have this card. I know that you can do it. If there are forces saying not the right time and forces saying we have to do it now, I know that you can find that middle path where maybe nobody else is able to find it. You can find it. And you can bring these two sides. Maybe these are two um, you know, different forces or factions in your family or at work or different competing um, you know, competing uh, goals in your home or in your personal life. And you are going to find the way. Like you can sort of see we've got this as above, so below. And he makes a bridge between the heavens and the deeps. That's what you're doing. So, so if you notice that there's some swinging back and forth, try not to be um, put off by it or to think that it, it means that you have to get whiplash you have to keep in mind what your goals are and that you're trying to do something very new, very inventive, and you're going to have to bridge a gap that maybe hasn't been bridged before. So I hope that makes sense. I hope it's uh, interesting or useful. Um, we will face the new moon in Pisces on the 17th, so there'll be more fluid energy going on. Um, I want to thank you for watching the video. Thank you for your likes and your comments. I will put the foundation cards, the bottoms of the deck, the shadow cards as we call them. I put those in the description typically. Um, yeah, I think that's it for now. And um, if you want to share what kind of strange bridge you are forming and between what, I would be interested to know. And uh, in any case, until the next time, rock on with your bad selves.